When you create a digital breakout game using Google tools, one of the most important apps you will use will be Google Forms. The form you create will serve as your locked box with all of your locks featured in the form. In order to ensure students are not given the correct answers to the locks when they fill out and submit the form, but rather are forced to enter the correct answers before they can submit, we're going to use a feature called response validation for each question or lock. Let's take a closer look at how we set up response validation for each of our questions in a Google form. So I've gone ahead and created a brand new Google form and I'm going to go ahead and give my form the same title as my breakout game. Notice below the title, I can add a brief form description. This is where I could provide clues or hints as to how to fill out or complete the form. Once I've entered a description for my form, I'm ready to go ahead and create the first question for my first lock. Notice that by default, Google Forms gives us a multiple choice question card. I can change the question type by simply coming over to where it says multiple choice, clicking on the drop down, and selecting short answer from the menu. Now, instead of entering a question, I'm simply going to type in lock number one. I'm going to make this a required question by toggling on the required switch. And next, I'm going to click the three dots for the more options menu and turn on response validation. Here, I can now tell Google what I will accept as the correct response. Notice that I can select number if the answer was a number. I can say that that number must be greater than a certain value, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, equal to, not equal to, between, not between, is the number or a whole number. If my answer contained text, I could click the drop down beside number and select text and notice that I can set it to contains, doesn't contain. I can even state that it's an email address or if I select URL, the respondent would have to enter in the exact URL web address. In the case of lock number one, which is related to clue number one, I need to set the fields for response validation to text contains. And that's because when participants solve clue number one, they're going to receive a set of simple directions, up, down, left, left. With that being said, here in the text field next to contains, I'm going to enter those directions. Notice that I do not put any spaces in between words or use any special characters like hyphens or dashes or forward slashes. Next to the text field, I can enter custom error text. This would be a customized error message that participants would see if they try to enter in the incorrect information to answer lock number one. Now, because I left out spaces and special characters in the answer, I might want to give a hint for lock number one. So here next to lock number one, I'll just quickly type hint and I'm ready to add my next question for lock number two. To add a question in a Google form, I can simply click the plus sign here in the floating toolbar. And again, I want this to be a short answer question. And in the question box, we'll type lock number two. We'll make this a required question by toggling on the required switch here at the bottom of the question. And I'll click on the three dots and select response validation. This time, the second clue or puzzle is going to give us a four digit number. So we are going to leave response validation 
set to number, but we're gonna change greater than to equal to. So participants have to enter the correct numbers into the form in order to eventually be able to submit the form. So our answer for lock number two is one, four, zero, nine. We will enter that into the number field. And again, we can create a customized error message that will pop up if the participants enter in the incorrect digits. Here beside lock number two, we could give another hint that this will be a four digit number. All right, let's preview our form to see what our participants will see. So here we see the title and the description of the form. And below we see lock number one with the hint and lock number two with the hint. Notice what happens if I start to enter an incorrect answer. I receive that error message when I try to click off to go to the next question card that says double check the clue, make sure you followed the path correctly. Let's see what happens if we enter in the wrong digit. Again, same thing, when I go to submit the form, I get that error message for this particular lock. And again, if I try to click the submit button, I cannot submit this particular form. However, if I enter in the correct responses, I no longer receive the error message for either question card. And when I click the submit button, I'm able to submit my response. Please note that if you are creating a digital physical hybrid breakout game, you can always provide a hint or a clue with a Google form by going to the settings of the form, clicking on presentation and entering a confirmation message. So instead of participants receiving the message, your response has been recorded, you could leave them a clue or even leave them the solution to one of the physical locks for the physical game.